If you ever find yourself looking for a race day shoe, but you don't want to spend that $250 on these super shoes, especially because they're kind of specialized to the half marathon and marathon, the brand new Hoka Cielo Road is one that you might want to take a look at. Hoka calls the Cielo Road at their lightweight, feel fast flat, and it's going to specialize in more of the 5 to 10k distance. And also because it's a 5k and 10k race shoe, it's also going to work extremely well for any workouts. This is the Cielo Road. Let's get into it. Let's get these disclosures out of the way. Hoka was good enough to send me the Cielo Road for the purpose of review. However, they are not going to get a chance to see this video before you do. And with that out of the way, let's get started with price. The Hoka Cielo Road will cost you $160. And right off the bat, I think that represents incredible value, especially if your focus is at those shorter distances, the 5K to 10K. I think maybe this could work as a half marathon shoe, but I also think it might not be the best for the half marathon. But we'll talk more about that in just a second. Either way, $160 is a very fair price for this shoe. And look, I still think it's well priced, even though this shoe is not perfect for me. There are a couple things about it that I would like to change. Let's talk about weight. Hoka claims that their US men's size 9 would tip the scale at 7.5 ounces or 213 grams. A light shoe, guys. But in my size, a US men's size 13, the Cielo Road tips the scale at 8.6 ounces or 245 grams. Guys, this is light on my feet. And look, I know a lot of you with smaller feet are going to be used to running in shoes that weigh 240 or less grams. But for a guy with size 13 feet, it's a real treat. Oh, and if you are enjoying this content, if you like hearing about running shoes, go ahead and whack that like button. And if you're not already, consider subscribing. Doing those things really helps the channel out. But let's talk about spec. Let's talk about materials and as usual we'll start at the top we'll work our way down. Guys look at this heel collar. It's like there's nothing there. It's super thin. There is nothing actually pressing against your heel right at the top of this heel collar. Now if we look just a little further in you can see there is a bolster here on the medial side and on the lateral side and then if we look at the back there's nothing there. So there is no padding right against the back of your heel. And the heel counter, well look at this. The heel counter, there is no heel counter. This thing is all flappy. Now, obviously, when you put your foot in, your foot is gonna fill that out. But there are some downsides to not having a heel counter, and we'll discuss that in just a minute, too. For the upper, Hoka is using a 100% recycled polyester, and to say this upper is light would be an understatement. If I just hold it up, I think maybe, no, I'm looking on the camera, you can't see me through it. But this upper is so porous that I can see everything going on on the inside. The times that I have worn a pair of socks with some writing right on the toes, I can read it through the upper with no problems. That means this shoe is breathable. I'm sure you put that together without me actually spelling it out but I would go so far as to say that this is the most breathable shoe that I have. Now I know a lot of you are going to be calling me on that saying well Matt what about this and what about that and the only shoe that I think comes close to the breathability is Nike's Vaporfly 3 but that upper is a little more knit like. The feeling of the upper on this yellow road is a little more synthetic it just doesn't feel like it's going to absorb any liquid whatsoever it's just going to let the air flow through. Now before I held them up to each other I thought that the yellow road was very similar to the Rocket X2 but I happen to have the Rocket X2 right here and if I hold them both up the Rocket X2 is an extremely breathable shoe but it is more like I don't know more like a vapor weave whereas the Cielo Road is more like a net it's like a barely there fishing net just holding your foot to the midsole. As far as overlays Hoka is using just minimal overlays and obviously these are just to give it a little structure got the branding here on the lateral side and then on the medial side there's just a little TPU overlay right here there's a little bit of structure coming around the heel but as we've already said that structure is like minimal doesn't feel like there's anything there but these overlays on their own probably not going to be enough to give this shoe enough structure to actually feel good around your foot so Hoka has included an internal chassis system and if I hold it up can't really see it on my camera but there are some underlays all over underneath the upper all over underneath that's a little misleading but there are underlays under the upper that makes more sense and basically these underlays this internal support chassis is what's giving the Cielo Road its shape it's letting the upper stay upright rather than just falling flat onto the midsole and it's nice that internal chassis kind of attaches to the eyelet chain comes all the way down to the midsole so when you cinch the laces there is a lovely midfoot lockdown overlays running the length of the eyelet chain just to give that a little structure and support and then we come to the tongue. Now the tongue is the only place that the name of the shoe is actually pasted. You can see it right there, Cielo Road. And the tongue could probably not get any thinner than it already is. This is a super light, razor thin tongue. And it fits right into this ultra light, feel fast flat that Hoka is trying to sell us. If you often get a lot of lace bite when you cinch the laces down, this tongue is not gonna do you any favors. But luckily for me, I didn't experience any lace bite and I found the tongue worked pretty well. Now, the tongue is not gusseted. There is a lace loop right in the middle, so your tongue isn't moving all around. But because this tongue is so thin and it's not gusseted, sometimes it requires a little extra time to put your foot in. And this isn't gonna be a surprise to any of you that have worn 
on a shoe like this in the past. When we make materials very thin, sometimes we have to be a little more intentional with putting our foot into the shoe. Sometimes it takes a bit of time to just reposition that tongue so it doesn't roll up on top of your foot. And for those of you that are wondering, I did experience the same type of additional time needed to put the shoe on with the Hoka Rocket X2. However, in both cases, once the shoe was attached to my foot, tied down, ready to go, I didn't experience any problems later on in the run. Right, I'm gonna circle back to the, the fit and putting your foot in in just a second. Let's come down to the midsole. Hoka is using a full length Piva midsole and I've got to say I'm here for it. Hoka including Piva in their midsoles I think has changed their game. We've got the Rocket X2, now we've got the Cielo Road and of course the Mark X has a layer of Piva foam and they're just fantastic. Now I said full length Piva foam, there is no plate in the shoe. There is nothing to give extra support. You've just got Piva and that's it. Well, that's not actually it. If we come down to the outsole, we do have a healthy amount of outsole rubber. In fact, for a racing flat, if I can say that, lack of a better word, there is a lot of outsole rubber here, giving a little extra weight, but also a lot of support. Now, I did say racing flat, and that reminded me that I haven't told you about the stack height, because it's not exactly classic racing flat height. The Hoka Cielo Road has 31 millimeters in the heel, 28 millimeters in the forefoot for a three millimeter drop. Have you ever run in another shoe with a three millimeter drop? If you have, let me know in the comments. I have not. And generally speaking, I tend to shy away from the lower drop shoes. Although recent experience has been telling me that I don't really think that's necessary. If I'm just careful and I don't pile on my volume onto these lower drop shoes, turns out I'm gonna be just fine. I've been putting a lot of miles in the Cielo Road and some other lower drop shoes that I've been testing and I'm actually feeling pretty healthy. The ride of the Cielo Road is actually exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting this shoe to feel light and fast on my foot. I was expecting it to disappear as I picked up the paces and it certainly did that. I was a little worried when I went out for my warm up and then the cool down after I was running my intervals or after I was running at tempo or threshold pace because I wasn't sure how the shoe was going to perform. But I gotta say, I was expecting it to work well at speed. I wasn't expecting it to work well at lower speeds or an easy pace. And I was pleasantly surprised that it worked at lower paces too. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not an easy day shoe. This is not something you're gonna put on and just go out and churn out an easy 10 mile recovery run. This is a shoe that you put on when you're ready to bring the heat. And when you do start picking up those paces, it feels really good. It is certainly responsive. And recently I have been really enjoying shoes without plates. So it's nice to have such a fast feeling shoe without that plate. And then it feels like it gives me enough support and enough protection from the road. I remember running a long time ago when stack heights were a lot less. And if I wore a shoe with too little of a stack height, I would feel kind of beat up after the run. I found the Hoka Cielo Road to be very protective and I didn't feel like I've been running really hard after the run. I actually think that's a bigger deal and higher praise than it might sound at first. I certainly don't expect a shoe like this, as light and as fast as this, to leave me feeling fresh at the end. And you know, I don't mean fresh. I mean, when I'm putting on this shoe and I'm going out and I'm knocking out these workouts, I am anything from fresh at the end. But I don't feel like I've been beat up and that's key. Also, let's just hit the outsole again. This amount of rubber, again, very surprising, but on the most positive side of this, it means the shoe is going to last a long time. I tend to think these race shoes, they just they just don't last the way a daily trainer is gonna last. But I think with this amount of rubber on the outside, I think you're gonna have the shoe in your rotation for a fairly long time. I mean, I wanna say as long as you want, but these shoes aren't built to last forever. Let's just say it's gonna last you more than a few races. That's about as most ambiguous as I can be. It's gonna last a long time. Now, let's talk about what I didn't like. And there are a couple of things. The first thing that I found out, and I found this out the day before my first run, because I put these shoes on and I wore them around the house. And I usually do this with new shoes, just so I can get a feel for them the day before I go out for my run. I wanna know what they feel like on my foot when I lock it down. I wanna know if there's any heel slip. And I'm glad I did, because generally when I wake up and I go for a run in the morning, I sit down and have a cup of coffee and then it's all systems go. Like I don't want to mess around with my shoes. I want to know how they fit so I can get out the door quickly. And if I hadn't put my shoes on the day before, I would have been stressing trying to dial in the fit. So this is what I found. When I put these shoes on, first of all, and I tied them normally, I found that just walking around the house, I was having a considerable amount of heel slip. And that's no good, especially for me. And I say especially for me because I don't experience heel slip in shoes. It's a very rare occasion when I do. So I did the lace lock method and you can see if I hold it up, I still have the little loop tied into the top of the shoe and as soon as I did that and I cinched it down that problem disappeared. I mean, that's not surprising. If we do the lace lock method, it does give us a little extra support. I was, however, worried that I was going to get a little extra pressure on the top of my foot from that lace lock method. Because in the past, I've had, when I have to tie the laces just a little higher up, it seems to put a little extra pressure right up on the top of my foot. And I'm happy to report that I didn't have that extra pressure. So every time I have taken out the Cielo Road, I have had to do the lace lock. But again, other than taking a long time to put on the shoe, didn't experience any trouble with heel slip. Now, that's not to say that I felt totally locked into this shoe. My heel 
still felt just a little loose. There was no movement. It just wasn't what I was used to compared with other shoes. But with the lace lock method, the shoes were absolutely runnable and I wouldn't hesitate to take these out for my faster efforts and 5K or 10K distance races. But another downside that is related to the first downside of heel slip is that when I tie the shoes using the lace lock method, the laces become very short. Isn't, isn't that comically short? And if you have been following me for a little bit, you know that I like to double knot my laces. Sometimes when I'm racing, I will even triple knot my laces to ensure they don't come untied. But with the Hoka See Hello Road, that was a bit of a challenge. And it would have been better if I had little tweezers to hold on to the ends of these while I was down here tying a knot. The first one's okay, but then the ends are getting very short and I'm trying to do it again. Anyway, I'm just, look, I'm grasping at straws with things to complain about. But I want you to know before you buy them, especially if you have a wider foot, that you may have a bit of a time tying the laces just because they're a tad short. Oh, one more thing. Now, this isn't exactly a downside for me, but it could be a downside to you. And that is, there isn't an obscene amount of room in the toe box. Now, keep in mind, these are race shoes. They are going to be a tighter fit than your average daily trainer. And for me and my fairly narrow feet, I think they still feel like race shoes. Now, even though I do have narrow feet, there seems to be an appropriate volume for my foot at least, but I think people with wider feet may run into a bit of a problem. This shoe may not be for you if you have wider feet. Oh, and just a little bit about fit. In my experience, these fit me the same as the Rocket X2. However, in these and the Rocket X2, I am a size 13. In all other Hoka shoes, I am generally a size 12 and a half. So they're race shoes I have to size up from what I wear in their regular shoes. Take that for what it's worth. Are you thinking about picking up a pair of the Hoka Cielo Road? Plan on doing any 5k or 10k races soon and if so what shoes are you going to wear to run those races? I'd love to hear from you. Guys it's Matt B. This has been my review of Hoka's Cielo Road. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.